This is the story of our Pew Runner project at St Peter and St Paul's Church, Charing. It all began when several of us from Charing joined a pilgrimage to the Holy Land at the end of April 1983. The pilgrimage was led by Father Fred Waghorn, a retired priest living in Charing who regularly assists our vicar with Sunday services. On our outward flight we had an engine failure and the plane had to turn back to Heathrow. After many hours of delay and considerable anxiety, we finally reached Jerusalem in the middle of the night. That morning we attended the service at St George's Anglican Cathedral, which is filled with embroideries and gifts from members of the Anglican Church worldwide. From that moment on, some of us decided that we should like to make something for our church, not only to commemorate our pilgrimage, which was then only just beginning, but also because we were so grateful to have arrived safely. In brief, we had a marvellous pilgrimage, and after some weeks of thought, in September 1983, we called a meeting to discuss our ideas with other people who may be interested. About 18 people turned up to the meeting, so the interest was there, and we discussed our ideas, decided not to make kneelers as we already had some quite good ones, but we decided that we would try to make pew cushions. We made six to a commercial design, but that idea had its drawbacks. So one good lady dra grafted the six together and made them into a pew runner. And although it wasn't a very good pew runner, from that moment on, the idea of pew runners was born, and we were stuck with it. Another meeting of Charing Ladies was called, and with much trepidation, it was agreed that we should make 26 pew runners for either side of the main aisle. They were to be 9 feet long and 13 inches wide, and Winifred Doughty was to be in charge of the needlework, and I, Hilary Cavill, to be in charge of the finances. We were loaned £100 by our vicar, John Norse, to get us started and to buy the basic materials. And then the Church Women's Guild had a coffee morning for us, which was successful. And we had two small functions ourselves to raise money for our own fund. And many other good friends made donations. However, some people gave the money for a complete pew runner, which was to be dedicated in the memory of a friend or a loved relative and the pew runners have labels on the back stating this. This is an example of the labels. The wool we used was mainly um, carpet thrums, or in other words, the offcuts from the carpet factories. We were fortunate that we were able to get the four basic colours, green, blue, red, and the natural colour, which were only used for the backgrounds of the pew runners. The rest of the wool we bought in what was called mixed thrums which arrived much like this, even worse at times, and it took many hours, very many hours, of sorting it into various shades and colours and making it into usable little hanks, such as these, reasonable lengths uh, for our workers to use. We were fortunate also that we were able to get even more colours from the mill in Ashford and I suppose we eventually used about 60 to 70 colours. We had been 
recommended to use canvas with seven stitches to the inch, and that was available from a specialist needlecraft shop in Salisbury. But we could not get graph paper at seven squares to the inch, so Bertram Doughty proceeded to produce some. This was the canvas we received from the makers, and when it arrived, of course, we knew it was seven to the inch, but we can't. We also found we couldn't get graph paper. So to avoid catastrophes, we made up some paper, which very fortunately was uh, copied for us on a machine by a very good friend. I then continued uh, with the designs on that graph paper by submitting this design to the vicar. It is of the Four Seasons. He approved, and from those little designs, I made up some rather garish colored charts, but purposely, because the ladies can see them far, far better with distinctive colors. There are Four Seasons, and they they have a, a colour chart, which I made, of the, the colour here matches exactly, of course, the colours on the chart, and the walls then are traced across. So it does simplify from the ladies' scene. At the same time, Delia Baobank was doing designs for the, the holy ladies. This is the one of the temples which was done on 10 to the inch, which is usually very small. So that was then later done on 7 to the inch, which is a big improvement for the ladies' point of view. I was at the same time continuing with other designs, and the bell ringer suggested that it would be nice to have the bells you'll see that in the center there are charts and those charts are for different peels. This one is the Grand Sir Doubles and this one is the Bob Minor. But both sides of the charts were these bells and there are of course other charts as well. Having done all the charts and having done nearly all the work, I made a list of facts which I think you might be interested in. The number of pew runners, the number of stitches in the pew runners was 72,000. The number of stitches in the, the, all the pew runners was 1,872,000. On the, the canvas used for each runner was 15 square feet and the canvas used for all of them was 43 yards. The designs, there were 17 different designs, but only five designers. The weight of the wool, strange enough, was two and a half pounds. And the number of months uh, taken for the shortest time was four months, and the, the average time roughly nine months. The underlay, the amount of underlay, was 32 square yards. Interesting, if you are. Is it take you to do um, one, one square inch of that, approximately? 
I have no idea. <laughs> Just do it in what time you have available, there, when, you, yeah. when you well, can pick it up. Yes, the thing is, six of, there are six of us doing this, you see, so we each have it for a month. Um, but um, it hasn't, the first one we got through quite quickly, but this one's taken a much longer time to do. Um, it takes a lot longer than you think it's going to take. <laughs> Much longer, didn't it, Mum? This is the uh, chart we're working from. Francis Lee uh, designed it and it depicts scenes from the Holy Land. Um, this one is the Sea of Galilee and we have the loaves and fishes at this end and the um, wine jars and the grapes at this end. And we have the transfiguration in the middle. I'm not sure what the whereabouts in the Holy Land that this was uh, this scene depicts. Um. The first work began in January 1984 and slowly and surely we have continued right up to the present day. No time limit was put on the project. Some people work very quickly and others not and of course this also depends on personal circumstances. We have seen many triumphs and few disasters. It's much harder to unpick and stitch again and there are all of 72,000 stitches on one runner. Some runners were made by individuals, some by two or three, two were made by a team of six ladies and the Women's Institute runner was stitched by 24 ladies in all. As each tapestry was completed, Bertram Doughty took over and proceeded with the work of pressing and backing. This is where my task starts. As Hilary had told you, I do the backing. <clears throat> I lay the, the runner out on the table and pin it down at each end. And having run it out, uh, I pin one end first and then stretch it as far as I can, which can be up to two inches, for the wool is uh, sometimes loose, sometimes tight. Having done that, I then damp a cloth, quite, quite damp, lay it over carefully, and then I start pressing with a reasonably hot iron and it has to be done slowly and carefully to smooth the wool and to keep the canvas at that length. This takes quite a little while. Now I 
have turned it over to the, uh, the back of the runner so that I can put the contact glue on it. But before I do that, I have to put a line down on the edge to keep it absolutely straight. And I work, first of all, the pins on that one side. Having got that reasonably straight and so, I then go over to the other side and pull, again, pull the rug or runner so that it uh, becomes straight and even width right the way through. This takes up to somewhere 70 to 80 pins at least. Then I measure the whole thing right the way through. It's usually somewhere around about 12 and a half to 13 inches. I measure both width and length. And then I take it across to the other bench where I mark it over on the underlay. This is an ordinary carpet underlay and uh, is about a quarter of an inch thick. Quite hard to cut, but it's done with scissors, as you see. <clears throat> That's getting rid of the waste. I then take it over to the table where the runner is and test it for size. So seeing also that the ends are quite square, again that's rather important. This is simply adjusting some of the pins uh, to stretch the mat out just a tiny bit more where it didn't, uh, it wasn't quite straight. This invariably happens. I can then roll the underlay up and take it back to the other bench. So of course the part to be glued uppermost. So both surfaces, the wool and the underlay, are now ready for gluing. This is a contact glue I should be using and uh, needs somewhere around about 10 to 15 minutes set. In, have, in other words, it has to be touched dry. Brushed on, reasonably easy, more or less stippled on as you can see, and has to be done as quickly as possible. I always do the, un, the I always do the runner first because it takes longer and is more difficult to do it on the wool. The underlay is very much easier and much, much quicker. Then, when it is touched dry, it goes across to the other side where I've laid some paper down to prevent the two surfaces contacting each other until I want them to. 
because once it touches, it really sticks. So one has to be very careful. Paper is of great help. I then get my little roller and roll it down as hard as I can, a small stretch at a time. And having rolled the whole thing down, I then go back, mark corners, and cut them off ready for the turning up as mitres rather than a lap. It is neater. Having done all that, the drawing pins are removed from the edge 